Hello, this is a tutorial on using the Roto Brush tool for creating the invisible effect. So I've already prepared my layers. I've got my clean plate, the plate where my actor walks in, and then the plate where I'm actually going to create the invisible effect. So for now I'm going to turn off the other two because I don't need those right now. Um, and what I'm going to do now is click on the Roto Brush tool. I'm just going to double click the actual layer I want to work on, and that now reveals our tools. So I'm just going to start by drawing a quick outline just around the edge of our actor. You can see it's obviously picked up some of the green. So a green cloak and a green background doesn't make it very easy for this tool. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, which as we said, this is the background. Now it does a pretty good job of cleaning that up. Let's come to the nice side as well. And just need that a little bit. So it's definitely a bit quicker than masking, but we'll just have to go through it frame by frame. So let's move on. Oh, we've got a bit of background there as well. Oh dear. There we go. So again, I'm just going to keep advancing through the frames. It's because of the green tree and the green cloak, it is creating a few difficulties. But it's not too difficult just to clean it up though. So I'm doing is just left clicking to paint out the background and just normal clicking to select the area that I want to keep. But we can see it is still fairly fast. So I'm just advancing through the frames, just making sure it's going alright. Okay, so I'm going to pick a bit more background than I want, so I'll just select that again. Oops, I've now left some out, so I'm just going to come back a couple of frames. Seems to be struggling a little bit with this edge, which surprises me. So it's just a good idea to keep a close eye on all the outline. Oops, wrong colour. I'll stop in a moment because I think this probably gives you a good idea of how to actually use this tool. Again, it would be a lot more accurate if I'd not shot against the green hedge. Uh, I am wo working on the raw footage straight off the Canon EOS 7D. I've not tried to do any form of compression or proxies. Wind that back a frame. Okay, I'm going to stop there because that gives you a pretty good idea of how to go about it. I can just continue doing this until I've finished masking out the entire thing. So now I can actually select these different things. That shows me what I've now actually got. Um, making sure these layers are turned off. So making sure these are not selected, so they're not turned on. I'm going to click on Invisible. And I'm, invisible there, and I'm going to pre-compose the layer. So there's pre-compose. Moving all the attributes. A moment to come back. It's back onto composition one. It's going a bit slow. 
think it's still pre-composing. Okay, there we go. So there's our master. It's a bit messy, but a bit more time and would uh, make it, make it a bit cleaner. So I'm going to bring our clean plate back. But what I'm now going to do is come over to our effects. Actually, I'm going to click back on our clean plate. Effects and presets. I'm just going to click in displace, displacement map. So we've got some dragging the displacement map down to our clean plate layer. I'm going to choose, rather than it being displacement map layer, clean plate, I'm moving that to our invisible comp. I'm going to flick onto illuminance, illuminance, and then rather than center map, stretch map to fit. And now I'm going to actually turn off our invisible layer. We can now see a little bit of wobbly, but we can just move these sliders around until you get an effect that you like the look of. And this is down to personal taste. And there we go. That's how to create the invisible effect using the Roto brush. So I've just come back into our pre compose layer. And what I've actually now done is just gone round and just masked the rest of it. I can check the differences. There we go. Uh, I've just gone quickly painted over it. it. Took me between sort of five and ten minutes just to finish it off. It's not the neatest job, but it will do what I require it. So that's back in the pre-composed layer. So I'm just going to click back into our invisible comp. I'm not. There we are, back in comp one. Now I'm back in comp one. We can see that it should be now working. Oh, we're going a bit slow now. I'm recording. There we go. So now we've got the effect, the finished result. And that was it. So another 5-10 minutes was all required to finish off our rotor brushing.